Hi, I'm Rick Blacker, Intel Software Developer Evangelist, along with Michael Kopic, owner of the Intel Plays Great Certification Program, and Giselle Gomez, Software Developer Evangelist for the Intel GPA. Today we want to tell you about how you can get your game certified on Intel Graphics and why this might be important to you. Mike's going to cover things like the certification basics, Two example systems that you can run your game on, the World of Tanks Encore system pre-check, how to package your results and submit them to Intel. I'm going to come in and I'm going to cover downloading, compiling, running, present mod, and Giselle will come in and give you an overview of the Intel GPA tool. And after all that's done, we'd like to come in and open it up for a Q&A session. With that, I'd like to turn it over to Michael. Hello everyone, let's start by talking why you want to get certified. Intel is the market share leader in PC graphics. Ensuring gamers get the best possible experience on Intel graphics gives you the developer access to millions of PC owners globally. Developing a game is a difficult journey. Getting exposure in the market, grabbing mindshare more so. Steam gets an average of over 8,000 new titles every year. Plus, the digital distribution space is becoming more diverse with GOG, Origin, Uplay, and Epic. It's becoming harder for developers to get their games in front of gamers. The Intel Game Dev Boost is a go-to-market program to help drive awareness, engage the game community, and help generate game sales. Self-testing or self-certification is the first step to participating in Boost. What we see here are example platforms for self-testing. On the left, we are focused on HT graphics. As noted in the methodology document, systems such as the Dell XPS 13 are ideal test platforms. But any system with similar specs will do. If you're unsure what you have will work, email us at gamedev at intel.com. Gamedev is one word. And we will let you know. On the right, we have what is commonly known as the Skull Canyon NUC, using our Iris Plus graphics. Testing on both systems is not required. It's ideal, but we understand if you only have one of these platforms available. Of the two platforms, the HD graphics system would be the more important, as the install base and the market share is much larger, so you have more access to gamers. Certification requires a minimum of 30 frames per second at 720p for HD 620 graphics and 1080p for Iris Plus graphics. The goal is to find the best game experience on the respective platform that is the ideal combination of resolution, settings, and frame rate. So, if your game runs at 70 FPS at 720p low settings, then you can raise the graphics quality or the resolution, or both, until you get that ideal experience. You, the developer, know what that ideal experience is for your title, what you want the gamers to see and hear and feel. Get as close to that as you can. Intel releases new game-ready graphics drivers monthly, and they're delivered via Windows Update. Ensure you're on the latest build before testing, and where possible, if using either the Unity or Unreal engines, Update to the latest build. That way you can take advantage of the many optimizations we have co-developed with Unity and Epic. World of Tanks Encore is a free benchmark. By running Encore and comparing the score to what we provide, you can see how your setup compares. You do not have to match the provided score. Uh, this merely helps both you, the developer, and us know where your test system falls performance-wise. Say, for example, you get an 8600 instead of the 8211 listed here for HD graphics, and your performance is in the 40s. We see that you have a higher end system, but in the mid to low range systems, your title should still be playable. When testing, run your workload three times at each resolution and graphics level. We take the median of the three runs for the final result. If your title includes a benchmark, Use it for testing. If there's no benchmark, find a repeatable and reliable location to test with. Some guidelines are provided in the methodology doc to help you select a good scenario. 
Also, take a screenshot of the game settings used and of gameplay at each setting tested. The screenshots let us see how you define low, medium, or high for your title and how the game looks at those respective settings you test. Once testing is completed, you need to package all the data into a specific folder format. We need the present monlog files, spreadsheets, and a DX diag for each system. The database we use is case sensitive, and the upload will fail if the files are not in the locations we are about to show you. It is imperative that this is correct, else we will either, ha either have to send the results back to you to be repackaged or we'll have to fix it. Either way, it's going to delay the results review. As I stated with the previous slide, ensure PresentMon is capitalized as shown here. The resolution and graphics folder called 10, 1980 by 1080 highest in our example is how the data is labeled in our database. Please be accurate and clear so that when the data is viewed, we know what settings were used. In this example, any Intel engineer who views the results for Hovership Havoc will see that it was tested at 1920 by 1080 high and passed. We only need a single DX Diag log per system, and it needs to be placed just beneath the system folder and not in the settings folder as shown here. Please do not put the screenshots in the PresentMon folder. Put them here as shown. Copy both the gameplay and settings screenshots for each resolution setting combo you test. The file names shown are auto-generated by PresentMon. If you rename the files, that's perfectly fine. Just make sure they always start with PresentMon dash, PresentMon capitalized as shown. And please don't use underscores. This table is provided in the methodology doc. We need to know the specs and setup of your system to properly understand the results you provide. We realize some of this info is in the DX Diag file, but having it here is for quick reference and it's going to be helpful in our review. Once you've created the zip file with the results, start an email with the title format you see here. Copy in the table from the last slide and attach the results. Now, once we receive the results, it takes approximately two weeks to review and get back to you. When we do get back to you, we're going to send you a report of your results. And if you pass and are certified, we're going to send you the usage guidelines for the runs grade on Intel graphics text treatment. You can use this text treatment in all your digital and print media. And with that, we wrap up why you want to get certified testing guidelines, and how to submit your results. Next, we're going to talk about PresentMon, the tool we use for all of our performance testing. And for that, I hand things off to Rick. Thanks, Mike, for that insight into the Intel PlaysGrade certification process. So now I'd like to give you a brief presentation on the PresentMon and how you can actually record your game's performance. PresentMon is a tool that was developed by Intel and is used to capture and analyze key performance metrics for graphics apps. PresentMon up and running is a pretty straightforward process. You're going to download this source code from GitHub. Once it's downloaded, you'll open it up in Visual Studio and build the executable. I tested this against Visual Studio 2017 and everything compiled just fine. One thing to make note of though is that PresentMon has a dependency on the Microsoft Performance Toolkit. Without the Performance Toolkit installed, PresentMon will not compile. I downloaded the latest version of the toolkit and everything compiled and ran just fine for me. Next I'd like to give you an overview of some tips that uh, will help your performance recordings. You know, update your drivers, make sure your computer is up to date. Go into Task Manager, look for any background processes that are running that might be killing your performance. And go ahead and run your game for at least five minutes. Make sure everything is loaded up into memory so that this way when we're capturing our data, we're getting the best data possible. So running PresentMon against your game is actually a pretty straightforward process. It's, it's really only two steps. 
You're going to launch your game, find that nice busy part of your game, let that run for about five minutes. Then you'll launch command, you'll launch present mod from a command line, and it's going to run in the background. And here I'm showing you how we're launching present mod with two command line parameters. One is the process name, and it's specifying an executable. In this case, we're running it against Hovership Havoc and a dash timed, which specifies how long PresentMon is actually going to record for. At this point in time, nothing is happening. Your game is running, PresentMon is running, but nothing is recording. In order to get your PresentMon to actually record, you're going to hit the F11 key on your keyboard. PresentMon will re record for 120 seconds. When it's done, it's going to generate a .csv file that gets saved in the same location as PresentMon executable. And here on this slide, I'm just showing you what the results would look like. Here you can see that I've ran PresentMon against the game, and these are three different CSV files that were recorded after hitting the F11 key. These are the exact same CSV files that you will package up and submit to Intel that Mike had already talked about earlier in the presentation. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to Giselle so she can talk to you about the Intel GPA. Hello, everyone. So you've heard all the details about applying to the place grade on Intel certification and what it takes to pass. Something that we haven't touched on that is very important not just to certify for place grade on Intel, but also for game development in general, is performance optimization. Optimization is what will take you from that 15, 20, whatever frame rate to that 30 FPS that is required for certification and is standard for any smooth gameplay experience. Optimization seems like a scary and daunting task but there are tools out there that make the process a little less scary and difficult. One of those tools is Intel Graphics Performance Analyzers. I'm going to go over the basics of using GPA and giving you some tips on how to use the tool to your benefit. GPA is not just one tool. It's actually multiple tools. In the suite, you'll find three tools to be specific, System Analyzer, Frame Analyzer, and Trace Analyzer. Each tool has a specific function and use for profiling, but the one that will be most beneficial to you all is Frame Analyzer. I will be focusing on the Frame Profiling tool for this webinar, even though the other tools, System Analyzer and Trace Analyzer, also offer benefits in the optimization process. A new addition to GPA is multi-frame stream capturing. Instead of capturing and profiling one frame at a time, you can now capture multiple frames at once with multi-frame stream capture. Capturing begins at the launch of your game and continues for the lifetime of that application. You can then open these streams in Frame Analyzer and iterate over the stream to identify intermittent glitches and frames with the highest frame times without recapturing data. Now that we have a little idea of what GPA is, we're going to dive into the benefit of using GPA in your development cycle. Let's look at the very common and realistic situation where you're developing your game and running it on a system with a high-end discrete graphics card. Based on preliminary testing, everything runs well. You're hitting your target 30 FPS, and your game looks beautiful. But then you decide to run that same game on your min spec to start optimizing for a lower-end discrete graphics card or even an integrated graphics card. Unfortunately, things are looking a little choppy. You can't run it at your desired resolution, and on top of it, you're not even running at half your desired frame rate. So you decide that the most logical of action is to just take out all the eye candy. You remove all your high resolution textures, you shorten your draw distance, you remove assets altogether, but you're still not seeing good performance. And to make matters worse, the game's not even looking very good at this point. It's not like you can take out even more of your game. What will be left? Luckily, however, none of these changes have affected the way things look or play on your high-end graphics card. You're still hitting that 30 FPS frame rate. But what will you do now? That is where GPA comes. Using a profiling tool, you can target optimizations to minimize the visual quality impact while dramatically improving performance. An added bonus is that with targeted optimizations like optimizing shaders, identifying and implementing best practices, using LODs, etc. You can also improve the look and feel of your game on your high-end spec. So instead of hitting 30 FPS across the board, you can achieve 60 FPS on your high-end spec and 30 on your min spec.
Frame Analyzer is the bread and butter of GPA and will most likely be the only tool that you'll use to profile your application. Frame Analyzer is our debug and profiling tool. It allows you to visualize, replay, and experiment with one captured frame from an application. You'll see API calls, shaders, resources, textures, and any other resources that go into building that captured frame. Keep in mind that when interacting with this frame, you will not be modifying your source code or affecting your original game in any way. Here, we're highlighting three of the main components that make Frame Analyzer stand out as a tool. Hotspot Analysis is the advice section of GPA. You can select any event from the bar chart at the top of Frame Analyzer window to see what sort of hardware bottleneck the event is experiencing and receive pointers and suggestions on how to fix that bottleneck. Using Hotspot mode, you can group all events by their state and or bottlenecks, allowing you to profile the entire frame bottleneck by bottleneck and fix multiple inefficiencies at once. We also have metrics analysis. This pane shows the bottlenecks in hotspot mode, but at the decision tree. The decision tree highlights the most pressing bottlenecks in a color-coded way, red being the primary bottleneck, orange being the secondary, and green being a non-issue. Finally, we have playback experiments. In Frame Analyzer, you can take advantage of four different experiments, two by two texture, simple pixel shader, one by one scissor rect, and disable draw call. These experiments can help you identify potential optimizations and show you the performance gain or degradation from using the specific experiment. There are also many more features to take advantage of in Frame Analyzer, such as shader profiling, pixel history, resource history, only to name a few. We will have more resources at the end of the spec that will show you how to quickly and efficiently implement these changes found through profiling to your game based on the engine you're using to build out your title. The suggested optimizations in these resources will also focus on things that can be implemented post-development without completely remaking assets. Wow. When you first open a frame in Frame Analyzer, you might initially be intimidated and not know where to start. We often suggest that you start by using the top-down approach. To do so, you'll set your X and Y axis in the bar chart to GPU duration. This will accentuate the most expensive events in your frame. You'll now be able to quickly identify which events to focus your attention on and can move from the most expensive event to the most expensive event. I want to go into some of the inner workings of hotspot analysis. We already touched on it a bit in my intro, but I wanted to reiterate the importance of this feature and the 3D pipeline. Hotspot analysis is going to be your best friend. Without knowing anything about the underlying hardware, you can use this information in hotspot mode to identify what stage is performing inefficiently for that specific draw call. Mind you that the 3D pipeline view is not your traditional rendering pipeline. It is the way that Intel hardware specifically renders each frame. The diagram on the right shows the exact decision tree that is used in Intel hardware to determine a bottleneck. The next step is to understand what these stages mean and the strat strategies that we can use to mitigate the issue. The following slides will guide us through some of these common bottlenecks. I've listed out some of the bottlenecks that we commonly spot in unoptimized titles. Geometry transformation, which is attributed to de dense geometry. Sampler, which can happen when sampling from too many textures or sampling from high resolution textures. And early depth stencil. This often presents itself in foliage or when you're drawing a lot of small objects in a large area, such as grass, trees, which is why it presents itself mostly in foliage. Um, on the right, you can also see the 3D pipeline view and some of the color coding that you can see or expect to see in order to determine what kind of optimization you're supposed to be focusing on or what bottleneck that draw call is experiencing. For time's sake, I'll only be going over geometry transformation. Some of the things to look for when you run into the geometry transformation bottleneck are dense geometry rendered to a small space, which would be things like your landscape, characters that take up a small amount of space, and anything else that could theoretically just be rendering out to a couple pixels. To combat this problem, use more aggressive LODs or decimate your geometry. Icebergs 
which are objects that are 5% in screen space view and 95% outside of it. Slicing your geometry can help mitigate and allow for better culling. Stragglers are items that are not being culled, but are not in screen space view either. These ones require a little bit more investigation in order to understand why it's not being culled appropriately. This is what each one of these scenarios will look like when you select the post-transform geometry for the affected draw call. From left to right, we have icebergs, stragglers, and dense geometry mixed with icebergs. On the right, the dense geometry mixed with icebergs is just the landscape, as well as the other two are also just landscape. Turning on the screen space view for the mesh will bring up the geometry exactly as it will appear on your screen and we'll also create a box to signify where your screen space is at so that you can identify what is an iceberg, what is a straggler, and what is just dense geometry. This has been a high-level overview of Intel GPA. For more information about the tool, be sure to go to the Intel Game Dev channel and website in order to look at webinars, articles, resources, and videos. Thank you all for listening to me ramble on about the tool and give you optimization tips. Thanks, Michael and Giselle, for your presentations. And now I invite you to check out some of the resources where you can join the Game Dev program, download the Intel GPA, and check out our new Boost website and some other useful links. Thank you for attending, and at this time, I'd like to ask you to stick around to join our Q&A session. Thank you everyone for attending. If you have any questions, uh, please enter in the Q&A. There is a question submit box. Um, we have a few questions, so um, we're gonna start addressing those now. Um, but be sure to go ahead and enter those questions in the, in the Q&A window. Um, the first question that we had, um, was around um, the system configuration, and if you are running on a low system configuration, how can you um, evaluate whether your game will run? So um, I'll I'll let Giselle take that one. Um, so this one's just a matter of optimization. Um, I let it kind of sit here. I was going to chat back with you, but I was hoping that the last handful of slides where I talk about performance optimization would give you a better understanding of what it would mean to be on lower spec. Essentially, you are going to have to do a lot of optimization in order to hit that 30 FPS. Um, but that's just the biggest thing is do performance optimization, test often once you're getting closer to the end of your development cycle and once you're getting close to wanting to certify so that you can iterate over your performance optimization multiple times. I hope that answers your question. If it doesn't, let us know, um, and we can do a little follow-up. All right, thank you, Giselle. Uh, the next question that we have here is, what has to be running when you test the game? And so I'm gonna let uh, Rick Blacker take that question. To, to, to run uh, a successful present mod, you really need two things. You need your game running, and as mentioned, let it warm up for about five minutes. You know, find that spot in your game that's really resource intensive, and then run present mod in the background. And those really are the only two things you need. And I think I also mentioned where you might want to go in and try to kill any background processes that Windows might be running uh, that could possibly interfere with the testing and hamper your system performance. All right, thanks, Rick. Um, next is um, question 
I assume it is okay if we test on a lower end GPU and can pass. So, um, Mike Coppock, could you take that question? Yeah, uh, for, for lower end CPU, uh, GPU, excuse me, um, if you pass, the lower end would still, we look for something that's a, the current generation, you know, like, like an HD 610, um, that sort of thing. But, you know, if it's something that's several years old, um, then uh, no. We lose you, Mike. Hey, can you guys hear me again? Now you're back. Yeah, thanks. Okay, sorry. We had, uh, I had a weird technical glitch on my laptop and uh, lost connection temporarily. Um, it's just yes. Yeah, so, so certification. We're looking at uh, you know kind of the current, um, you know, a couple uh, from within a couple generations, but nothing like you know four or five years old, that sort of thing. That's what I said when I got cut out. All right, great. Thanks, Mike. Uh, next question, can we run PresentMon on a Mac? Uh, Rick, you want to take that one? That is a very good question. Um, let me get back to you on that. I, I don't know, to be honest, but I, I think I can get that answer before the end of the presentation. Right. Okay. Um, there was a question about... Um, are the slides available offline anywhere? Um, we um, will have the webinar will be available 24/7 through this link, so you can uh, you can get a hold of the slides um, through the webinar. But we can look at making the slides available. Um, so send an uh, send an email to gamedev at intel.com if you're interested in getting a copy of the slides. Okay, uh, next question. Um, to avoid lag, do you have to run GPA on a separate system when testing? So um, I'll hand that up to Giselle. No. So we do have some overhead from using GPA or connecting GPA to your game. If you are running your game specifically just for Intel certification and you're running it on integrated graphics and you're just trying to hit 30 FPS, then you can just run it on the same machine. However, if you do have um, a game that is a little bit more CPU or GPU intensive and already has a hard time running on your, your computer, uh, whatever that computer might be or whatever system that might be, then you can remote in. But we usually don't recommend that unless you have a really, you know, GPU intensive game. For the purposes of optimization for the certification, I would say it's fine to run GPA on the same machine. It's what I do. It's what most of our AEs and um, developers that we work with do. Uh, it just kind of depends on what you want to do and the, the purposes of using GPA to profile your application. All right. Great. Thanks, Giselle. So the next question. Um, a little bit long here. So uh, the standard frame rate is probably 30 frame, uh, frames per second, the lowest frame rate at which a game is mostly played. However, most games say that 60 frames per second is the ideal target since it offers ex extra fluidity. Do you have a recommenda recommended FPS for mobile and AAA games for certification on Intel hardware. Um, Mike, you want to take that? I think 30 is our... 30 is our, our minimum. That that's you know has to be at least 30. Um, obviously, if, if we get certification results at 60, that's that's great. You know, some some game genres, racing, online shooters, and the like, you, you really, you know, 60 is ideal. But it, like I said, you know, 30 is a good standard. You can get a great experience for, for, for most games. So, you know, again, for us, we say minimum of 30 um, for certification, and then you, of course, can go up from there. And really, that's up to, you know, part of that guidance can come from, you you know, you, the developer, when you're, you know, submitting your results, saying, I found the ideal frame rate, the ideal settings, and the ideal um, resolution to give the gamers the experience I want them to have with my title. 
for mobile and AAA, well, AAA is the same as I just said. Um, uh, for for mobile, or if you're talking about like mobile phones, Android, iOS, um, it's not really my my field of expertise. Um, my specialty is in PC gaming and graphics. All right, great. Thanks, Mike. Uh, next question. Um, is the Boost program only for games? We have a game engine and want to see if we can work on certification as well. Um, so the Boost program is primarily for commercially available games that get certified through this testing program. However, um, we work with game developers in a, in a lot of different capacities. So um, for that particular game engine question, uh, what we'd recommend is you send an email to gamedev at intel.com. Um, we'd love to talk to you more about working with you and your game engine, um, and potentially we could see if that's an a opportunity for us to certify games using the engine. So thank you for that question. Uh, next question is, uh, how do I find out more about marketing and social media? So, um, Mike, would you take that one? Yes, uh, you can. Uh, for if specifically to the marketing and social media through through Boost, uh, you can go out to software.intel.com forward slash Boost, where we we discuss a lot of the things that that we do around marketing and social media. Uh, some of our activations include uh, social media on our our channels. We have uh, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram. And Facebook uh, is how we uh, are the social media channels that we use for our activizations around marketing. Uh, we have multiple things that we do, um, including things like uh, starter packs. These are bundles with um, the quick version is bundles around um, OEM hardware sales. You go, someone goes and buys a new laptop or a new desktop, they get this bundle or this master key. They go log into this website, the gamer does, and then based on what they buy, they can choose three games, four games, one game, whatever it is. Um, is one of the key things we do. We do a lot of work with Green Man Gaming. For those not familiar, Green Man Gaming is a big uh, dis uh, distribution platform for PC games, and we do a lot of activizations and sales through them. Uh, so the starting point would be the boost page, softwareintel.com forward slash boost, uh, where we, we talk about all those features. And you can also send an email to gamedev at intel.com, and we're happy to talk in more detail. All right, great. Thanks, Mike. Um, so there was a question um, about reaffirming the, the, the system requirements to run um, that uh, was given early in the presentation. So um, I think the question that I, I'm translating into, you know, what is needed to run the certification? Um, so I'm going to see if uh, if Rick can take that one. I think it's the system requirement. Yeah. So you need... Yeah, so I think we had a... a let's go back to one of the slides... I don't have it off the top of my head here. You can but what slide was it? Push to audience. So I, I, I'm sharing the slide, I believe. Oh, are you? Should be. So I think, you know, two good systems right here is like the Intel Core i7, and then which is an OEM system, and then the Intel Nook. That's a good system. They both have i7s. They one has the UHD graphics 620, and then the Iris Pro graphics 580. Those types of systems there are ideal for you know hitting our target numbers. Great, and and you know if you do have questions um, during the certification process, you can send questions to. Uh, game dev at intel.com and we'll um, try to help you solve you know technical questions and um, questions around the program okay next question um,
I think we're getting to the end of the question list. If you have another question, um, go ahead and submit it in the Q&A. Um, once again, we want to thank everyone for for attending. I, I did have one last point. Um, there was one correction to the slides, and that was um, for PresentMon, apparently there are binaries you can download, so you don't have to download the source code and compile it in Visual Studio. There, there are binaries you end that just allow you to run it. So. All right, great. Okay. Um, Thank everyone for attending. Um, we wanted to give you a heads up that we'll be uh, having another webinar where we're going to go into more depth on using GPA to optimize your game coming up. So watch for that in your inbox. And um, appreciate everyone uh, attending this webinar today. Um, see you, uh, see you uh, online and happy gaming. <laughs>